Let's look further at the potential consequences for Greece and its people and the concerns about the Eurozone and the global economy. Greg Ip is the chief economics commentator for the Wall Street Journal, and he joins me now. So, Greg Ip, what do people believe is going to happen tomorrow? Well, the actual default on the IMF loan is itself not a significant event because the IMF is not about to fail or stop lending to other countries as a consequence of this. It does mean that Greece is basically in arrears to its international obligations, and it can't really move forward in terms of acquiring, getting new funds so that it can reopen the banks and have its budget function normally until it comes to some sort of agreement with the IMF. So Greece in a holding pattern is what you're saying essentially until next weekend. What do people expect will happen at that point? Well, nobody really knows, partly because the referendum question itself is very unclear. Uh, Greeks are being asked to vote yes or no to essentially a very technical 40-page document that actually, until recently, wasn't even available in Greek. Moreover, the Greek government has been telling voters, this is not a referendum on staying in the euro. We're staying in the euro no matter what. But the creditors on the other side, the European Commission, the IMF, are saying the opposite. They are saying, de facto, if you vote no, then you're also saying no to Europe. So I think depending on how Greek voters interpret the question will largely depend, determine how that referendum uh, is decided. So, Greg, are you saying literally that this is completely up in the air at this point? It completely is. And I wouldn't even say that Greece is in a holding pattern, which would actually be a positive thing. I think the longer this uncertainty persists and the Greek banks stay closed, the worse it gets. Greece's economy is already in recession. In fact, it's the only major economy in the eurozone right now to be shrinking, largely because of the uncertainty that has surrounded negotiations between Syriza, the government, and the creditor nations. That's only going to get worse. And moreover, even if they voted yes in the referendum, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of speculation that that would force the Syriza government to resign, because how could they, in good conscience, carry out the reforms that the voters just agreed to, given how much they have opposed them? And so you would still have weeks and weeks of uncertainty while waiting for a new government to form. Well, we've seen the effects already on the U.S. Uh, markets today, dro the Dow dropping 350 points. What about in Europe? What, what, do, what do you see happening? What do people think is going to happen in Europe and the effect on the United States? Well, the near-term effect is probably likely to be much less muted in Europe and the rest of the world than it was four or five years ago when the Greek crisis first erupted. The reason is that other countries that are vulnerable, like Greece is, now have other places to go if they need to borrow money. Europe has a bailout fund, and the European Central Bank has made it clear that they will lend money to countries that need it, provided those countries adhere to whatever agreement on reforms they've already reached with the uh, European Commission. So you don't need – it's unlikely you'll get the money fleeing from banks and the bond market shutting down as you did three or four years ago. The bigger risk there is, I think, essentially political. Uh, what Greece has demonstrated is that people do have a limit to their ability to tolerate endless austerity and pain. And while the situation is not as bad in countries as like Italy and Greece and Spain, it is still quite bad. And people do have a breaking point. And if um, – the economy gets worse in Europe, and by the way, it had actually been doing relatively well up until recently, then that could uh, increase the intolerance of voters there for austerity, bring to power movements that are similar to streets in Greece, and I think, once again, raise questions about the future of the euro. And as I'm talking to you, I'm being told the wire services are reporting Puerto Rico's governor is saying that he is going to be asking for Chapter 9 uh, bankruptcy. So we will be watching that. And uh, thank you for, uh, for bringing us up to date on both of these crises. Greg Epp, thanks. Thank you.